Welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be going over how to upgrade your firmware in your Ender 2 Pro. If you saw my review, you know, one of the things I didn't like about this printer was the stock firmware and its lack of tramming wizards or, or any type of bed mesh. Now this upgrade is for my printer. So I have the 423 motherboard. If you have anything other than the 423 motherboard, this will not work for you. And unfortunately, I don't have one of the other motherboards to build the firmware for. So again, this is only for the 423 motherboard with the STM32 chip. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. And with that, we'll go ahead and get on with the update. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to get this started is take the firmware file, the bin file, put it on the root of your SD card, put it in your printer and turn the printer on. You should see a screen like you're seeing now where it's gonna go blank for a little while. Then you'll see the Ender logo and then you'll see a Marlin logo. And then if you see the 2121, then you should have successfully flashed your printer. Now, once you're at this point, we want to go to configuration. Then we're going to go to advanced settings. And then we're going to go to initialize EEPROM. And this will erase all the stuff that we have on our EEPROM currently and set up any new variables that we need for this uh, um, new firmware. Okay, so now let's get our bed trimmed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to motion and now we have a new item here called bed leveling. Go to it and then there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. We're going to start with our bed tramming and this will home the axis and it'll move the print head to the first corner. You would do all your adjustments then you hit next and then when you're finished you just go to done. So now if we look at the actual printer we're going to see that here it is moved to the first corner. We're going to put our spacer, you know, I'm using a feeler gauge, you can use paper, whatever. You're going to adjust your knob until you feel a little bit of drag. And then once you get that little bit of drag, you know that this corner is done. And then we will get our drag set right. Again, you just want a little bit of drag. I'm using a 0.1 millimeter um, feeler gauge, by the way. Then we hit next and it's gonna to move to our next corner. You know, I mean, this is what you would expect, you know, a printer nowadays to actually do. Um, all of this stuff should be, you know, set up for us. I don't know why Creality didn't put this in. Anyway, we'll do each of these corners, hitting next each time. And the end goal is that we should be able to go around the entire print bed without having to adjust something. When you get to that point, then say done and then your bed should be trammed. Okay, now that our bed is trammed, we're going to go back under our menu, go to motion. We're going to go down to bed leveling again. And this time we are going to say level bed. Now I've added uh, manual mesh leveling to this so that we can actually create a mesh uh, you know, of our build platform. This is gonna be way better than just tramming the bed. I mean, it, it is a small bed, but still this, this will make things really, really nice. So again, you just say click to begin. It goes to our first point. And instead of, you know, when tramming the bed, we're moving the bed itself up and down. Here, we're actually moving the nozzle up and down. And you're going to do the exact same thing you did, you know, when tramming. You, you want to use your feeler gauge or a piece of paper, put it under there, and then adjust the height of the nozzle up or down until you feel that little bit of drag. And then once you do, click the little red dial and it will move on to the next point. So go ahead and get that adjusted to where you need it to be. And, you know, don't pay attention to the numbers I have on here because you know, it's going to be completely different for your bed. Um, you know, it's not gonna resemble mine. 
The whole point though is that we're actually moving the nozzle and not the bed. So we're moving the nozzle itself up and down to where you know it's going to meet the bed. Hit the red button, takes you to the next point, rinse and repeat. You're gonna do this for each point that we have and we have nine different points. So go ahead and do that until you've reached the end. Okay, so now you should be finished and you should see the leveling done like you see on the screen. Now we have a couple of other things we should go over. One is you control this mesh by the bed leveling item. So as you can see, bed leveling is on. If for whatever reason, you know, you don't want to use this uh, functionality or, you know, you don't think it works right or whatever, you can come in here and you can turn this off. This is the only way to do this. Now, you could add it in, you know, G-code and your slicer and all that, but it's just easiest just to come in here and turn it off. With it off, it will not look at that mesh at all. Now, the other bit is edit mesh. So say that, you know, we created our mesh and for whatever reason, you know, the center isn't working right. Well, you can come in here, put in your index for X and Y, and then adjust that value up or down, you know, however you, you fine tune it, if you will, so that you're going to get that perfect first layer. So it makes it really easy, you know, to come in here, you print out your test. Okay, that didn't work. Let's go to this point, adjust it up and down however we need to. Okay, so let me kind of show you this because it kind of messes people up on how to figure out what the index is. So we're, this is our starting point, our first probe, which would be zero, zero, X and Y. Now, as we move it, note our X is actually moving, but our Y has not. So now we're going to be at one, zero, X and Y. And as we move on to our next point, depending on which one moves, that is going to move your index. So now we move again, X moves. This would be two, zero, X and Y. Now with our next step, Y will actually be moving. So now we're at two, one because you know again our Y moved middle of the build plate is going to be one one X and Y and this would be one or sorry this would be zero one X and Y now here we're going to be at zero, two, X and Y. One, two, X and Y. And then our last point would be index two, two. And that gives us the full index points for our entire mesh. It gets confusing, so I figured I'd show it to you. Okay, so let's go over two new options that you have here, bed Z and fade height. Fade height tells the system to stop using the mesh at a certain layer height. So, you know, if, if your bed's all, you know, jacked up, when you get to a certain height, it will stop using that and everything will be flat. Bed Z is basically Z offset. So, you know, since you don't have a probe, this will allow you to move the nozzle up or down in relation to the bed. I don't recommend you use bed Z, but if you have to, you can. Okay, so now that our mesh is done, let's go to our configuration, then go to advanced settings. Then we're going to go down to temperature. And we want to PID tune our hot end. So this would be PID tune E1. Now I normally print PLA on here at 200. So that's what I'm going to set this to. Again, this is whatever you print at the most. Set that to that temperature and then hit start 
and it'll go through its bit. I've sped this up for you so you don't have to sit and wait because this will take a little bit, you know, four or five minutes for this to finish. It'll heat up to its, you know, whatever temperature you've set. Then it'll cool off a little bit, heat up, cool off, heat up, cool off. Um, and that way it gets an idea on how long it's going to take, how much power it's going to take to get that temperature, uh, you know, what its cool off cycle is, all of those things. But then once it's done, we will move on and we will do our bed. Okay, so now we need to PID tune our beds. We're going to go down to configuration, then we're going to go to advanced settings, then temperature, and then scroll down to PID auto tune bed. Now I set mine at 50. You set yours to whatever you normally print at. This is, you know, what you want to set it as the normal, what you do the most. Like I said, I do mine at 50. Sit back and wait. You know, this is going to take a little bit for it to actually go through its cycles. I've sped mine up a bit here so that, you know, you're not having to sit and wait for it to finish. But it'll go through its cycles. And then once that's done, you will get a complete message. and we are finished move on okay so now we've basically done all of our configuration and setup for this so now we do go down to configure go down to store settings and this will store everything in EEPROM so we don't have to do it again good job all right so now we want to actually test you know our bed level to make sure that everything looks good now I've loaded up a Ender 3 bed test model here in Prusa Slicer. Um, I'm using the standard uh, Creality Ender 2 Pro profile that's in Prusa Slicer. Now this again this is for an Ender 3 so it's way too big for this. So we're going to just take the model and we're going to shrink it down a little bit. Just click on it. And then go to our resize and we're just going to push it in just a little bit and that should do it for us now the other thing that we want to do is we want to change our height to whatever you're printing at so we're printing at 0.2 so we need to change our height here to 0.2 now make sure you uncheck the little lock box so that you don't change all three values. You only want to change the Z so that it matches our layer height. And then we slice that up and we'll print it out. Okay, so here's what it looks like after we've printed out our bed level test that we just sliced up. Now what you want to do here is you want to feel them and they should feel smooth. Um, if they feel rough, then your mesh is wrong. You need to adjust it uh, so that the nozzle is higher. If they have gaps, then you want to adjust your mesh so that it's a little lower. See, this one is a little rough. You want to rub my finger across it. I shouldn't feel. Let's see if I can get this up. I'll show you. You shouldn't feel any ridges and then once you have it, try and break it. If it snaps apart, then you don't have enough squish. But that's a really good mesh right there. I'm not sure if you can see it all too well. But that's, that's what you should really look like when it's done. And it's not rough. You know, to the touch. Okay, so if you like this content, please like and subscribe. And as always, happy printing.